It says, There rose up certain sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. They're talking about us, about the Gentiles. And Peter says, what, about that, about circumcising them and making them obey the law of Moses, he says, Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which here he's talking about the Gentiles, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. So what's he saying? You're trying to put rules on them that we were never able to bear. They never were able to, be, to hold up to those rules themselves either. They always failed. They ended up being hypocrites pretending to be perfect. Because the law makes nothing perfect. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 18 and 19. And who's this book written to? Hebrews. The Hebrews, which is the Jews, right? The Israelites. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. And here the, the author of Hebrews is talking to the Jewish people and he's saying to them in verse 18, he says, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now listen, he's not talking to us here, although it's similar to what... Uh, what pertains to us. He's talking to the Jews and he's saying to them the law is being put aside. The commandments you followed all your life they're disannulled or they're annulled is what the way we would say it today. They don't count anymore because they were weak and unprofitable. They couldn't make you righteous. He says and that's why he says for the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did. What's the better hope to them? Jesus Christ. It sure is, and with it, the New Testament, or the New Covenant, so that they would go from leaving the Old Testament, or the law behind, and go into a New Covenant, where he's going to put his laws in their minds and in their hearts, and they're not going to have to try to do them. All they had to do was turn from the law and their traditions to the New Testament in Jesus Christ. They are saved through him, just as we are. But they have to believe. They must not fall away from faith in Christ or turn back to the Old Testament that no longer works for them. Frank, you are saved. Now you can go out tomorrow and deny everything you've learned in here. And God's not going to turn you loose. And that's the promise made to us Gentiles. But to the Jews, they've got to not only believe, they've got to keep that faith to the end of their lives. I mean, I can be unfaithful and just say, I don't believe in you no more. I'm still saved. Right. If you truly in your heart did believe at one time, then you're saved. At that moment, that you got the seal. You got the Holy Spirit. Now, you can go blaspheme God and just be a terrible person. Well, I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> technically speaking, not very likely, but right. technically speaking, you could. With them, they have to maintain that faith. They can't lose their faith. They can't have a time where, you know, like just suppose you do hear about people that they believed in Christ and everything, and then their whole family was burned to death in the fire. And it affected them so deeply that they turned against Christ for a while. You know? He's saying if they truly ever did actually trust in Him for their salvation, they're still saved. They may not have much to show for it when they get to the, that throne, uh, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, you know? but they're saved. But on the Jews, they, their Old Testament, the works the sacrifices, they can no longer count on them. They can't count on their birthright. They can't count on the sacrificial system to receive forgiveness of sins. Why? Because the final sacrifice for them has been made. Remember, all through their period of time, they had sacrifices to make to atone for their sins. But now Jesus Christ, the final sacrifice came once and for all. Their sacrifices don't count anymore. And so, that... that they have a chance to accept this, to accept that sacrifice, Jesus Christ, instead of the daily sacrifices that they've been offering. Now they can do one or the other. They can either accept Him, the final sacrifice, or they can turn back to the Old Testament, to the law, to the old sacrificial system. But woe to them 
if they turn back. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Where they are told, the Jews are told, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But there was a time when that's what it did. The, the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. In the Old Testament, it took away sins. In the New Testament, it doesn't. The sins have been taken away by Jesus Christ. You got it? Because that's quite a bit of a difference. So he's saying you can't go back to that way. They have a choice. For us, it's believe or don't believe. They have a choice to believe and come into the New Testament or to turn back and say, no, I kind of like these old ways where I bring a lamb every so often and I do it that way. Well, he's saying it's not going to work anymore because we're not there anymore. We've advanced from there. If they turn down God's final offer to them, this is what awaits them. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. And he's talking about the Jewish people here, to the Jewish people. And he says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, in other words, understood the truth about Jesus Christ, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away... And we'll go back to verse 4 again. He says, for it is impossible. Now let's jump to verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So what he's describing here is people that have had a full look at Jesus Christ and that he was their final sacrifice and understand it and turn away from that and go back and say, no, I like this whole sacrificial system where I bring a lamb instead. They said, well, if they're doing that, it's like they're spitting on the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for them. It's impossible to renew them again unto repentance. And that's the difference between them and us. Because for us, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And thank you, Lord, for this difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like the old boys didn't want to give up the goat and the lambs after they, after they took the blood. Well, some did. That was some did. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were they were used to. But for us, now again, now it's not the Jews. It's this is the area of Jew or Gentile, everybody's the same. Verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And he makes that point because he says we were still in sins. We were still dead in sins. And he says, And hath raised us up together and made, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. And then he makes those famous verses that most of us know, For by grace are you saved. <clears throat> not by works. He says, by grace are you saved, through faith, through believing, and not of yourselves, not of anything you do. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing you can boast about. For we are his workmanship. He's the workman. He's the guy that keeps working in us. That man that runs away because he lost his whole family and he's just running away from God, God's still working on him. He's his workmanship. Created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we, by grace, we are saved through faith, and not by anything we do. And we can't lose our salvation because we never earned it. <clears throat> Jesus Christ earned it for us. We didn't earn it. And that's the hardest thing. I have so many people, including good friends, that hear that and they say, well, wait a minute, there must be something that we have to do. Not to be saved. To be saved, we have to believe in what He did. It's all Him. None of it's us. And that's the difference between we who are blessed and Israel, at least where a majority of them failed, because they clung to their old religion instead of moving into the New Testament that was offered through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's today's lesson.
Good lesson.